Yeah. I got something I want to bring to you real quickly. Um, Because I learned it this morning. Uh, There was a band in the 80s called uh, Talk Talk. Uh, Many people nowadays won't know them directly uh, unless you are dialed into like synth pop in a weird way. Um, But they wrote the song It's My Life, which which was covered by No Doubt some years ago and made a moderate to decent hit. Um, No Doubt's cover is very by the numbers and it doesn't really bring forth the all the talent that's exhibited in it's my life by talk talk but this band was really good and their their front man mark hollis passed away uh he he was 64 and i don't really like i really like i really like talk talk if you were to ask me who my 50 favorite artists are i still don't think they're i still don't think they're in it but Two of their albums are easily among my 30 favorites of all time. Um, uh, but their, their career is, is, a, is a, they have five albums. Their career is a really odd one. They started out with a, with a, a really weird looking cover for their debut album called the party's over. That was essentially synth, synth pop of the day. Like, you know, this is, like I think their first album came out in eighty, either eighty or eighty one, uh, and these dates might be wrong because I'm just going off the top of my head. But their first album is called "The Party's Over," and it basically sounds like all of the synth pop happening at the time. So think like Duran Duran, think like Wham or um, uh, Depeche Mode, things like that. So very, very rhythm centric, very melodic, and definitely lots of synthesizers. But I always feel like the 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 unsung highlight of this is Hollis's voice, and his voice is very beautiful. Uh, but it's not just it's not just the quality of it; it's like what he brings to it, and he brings like a, a kind of brooding passion. Um, so he definitely sounds like a sad bastard. Uh, but I think within that he was able to project project a lot and as this band progresses his songwriting uh matures very very fast um their second album called it's my life with their biggest hit probably uh spoiler alert as i just said before it's it's my life uh, had a good it was a product of like MTV becoming very video well becoming popular through the use of music videos uh and as you know you you and I both know what there was a time where MTV played music and it was really good it's true um this was at GRL, the very, Carson was, Daly no that was that was when it got bad um <clears throat> fucking, <laughs> fucking kids um but uh it's my life is is uh, the is it's this kind of the same template as the party's over, with more of um. I feel like he brought more passion to his his lyrics, and I think the I think the synth hooks in it are actually really good. Um, his third album was his biggest. I think the biggest. I think it was the their biggest hit in England. I don't remember how it did. I don't remember how it did here but it was called uh, the Co- color of spring and it had the song uh, life's what you make it which is uh on pitchforks either i think it was either 200 or 500 best songs of the 80s and it was in the top half of that list uh that album is where they brought in different instrumentation more um like there's still synths involved but it was more uh, they did they did some acoustic operated more like spacious in the studio or the, in terms of like how their recordings are, are set up. Like there was a lot more space in them and, uh, and it overall sound is a bit closer to pop, just traditional pop and rock than uh, the early eighties reliant on synthesizers. But uh, after this album, they, this is where they just, they decided, yeah, we don't want to be famous anymore. Um, they released an album in 1988 called uh, Spirit of Eden. 
this is one of the it's it's one of the best albums of the last 40 years but it was drastically different not only from what the band had done prior but to what music was at the time like i mean it, uh, there was an article i read about uh spirit of eden on music aficionado uh i read it today again but i'd read it before because it came across came across my social media at some point but um it was a very much a product of what Hollis was listening to at the time, which is a lot of uh, like early mid seventies experimental stuff like can uh, or especially like Taco Mago or uh, like ambient uh, modern composers like Debussy and, uh, and some others. Uh, this is a very, it's a, it's a it's a weird mix of quiet and loud and almost symphonic without having like the full ensemble of a symphony. Uh, uh, the article on Music Aficionado talked about it in the same breath as like post rock, which is bands like Godspeed You Black Emperor, Slint, uh, Explosions in the Sky, Do Makes a Think, very chamber poppy, uh, very long pieces, big bands, and mostly instrumental. Um, and this is a, it's a very it's a it's a very different album and it's i think i think like if i think if i were to hard press you give me my you asked me to do my 30 favorite albums of all time this album's on it um same with their final album uh laughing stock uh spirit of eden got talk talk into some trouble uh because they decided yeah we're not going to tour and I think that that had some sort of legal ramification at the time, and uh, EMI, their their publisher, their publisher essentially sued them. And after they put out uh, their final album, Laughing Stock, uh, which was even weirder than Spirit of Eden, uh, it's it's quieter, it's uh, it's quieter, it's spacier, and it's further out there, uh, and. By all means, in my opinion, it's just as good as Spirit of Eden. This would be, if not on my top 30 albums of all time, it would be very close. Um, it was it was essentially the straw that, bo- that broke the camel's back because, uh, you know, it, it, was, it became the, the band operating for themselves rather than for success. And sometimes when you do that, it fails super hard. Um, and uh, both of those albums in particular are, are worth folks' time. And, I mean, even their synth stuff is, is, is really good. And it's sad to see Mark Hollis, you know, pass away. I, I, may he rest in peace because he was, a, he was a great songwriter, a great singer. And he, after, after Talk Talk disbanded in 1992, I think, uh, he released one solo album in 1998 and basically said, yeah, I'm done with music. I don't know what he's been doing since because he has, he has kind of just stayed away from the spotlight in all, in every sense of the word. He wasn't, he didn't really disappear. Like he was always sort of around and living his life, but he just didn't go searching for spotlights. And uh, the weird thing is when I read an article, when the first article I read, I think it was by, it was on Brooklyn vegan that he had passed. Like it was all just hearsay as to whether or not he had actually passed. Like, like, so reports are coming in that Mark Hollis died. We've reached out and we haven't gotten confirmation. And, uh, but all signs are pointing to we've lost Mark Hollis. And then eventually like, I think pitchfork confirmed it through, uh, his longtime manager and and uh, one of the other members of Talk Talk, like everybody were was posting, like they were posting like in memoriam pieces on Twitter or whatever. And uh, so yeah, it sucks that he's it sucks that he's gone. It sucks that Talk Talk kind of got the shaft that they did, but also the the music is there, and if you are interested in 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 that you should check it out
Nice. It was either talk about that or, or mobile suit Gundam. So I'll do that the next episode. Yeah. What what is what is your favorite song? By them? Yeah. Uh I'm engaging in the conversation. I mean, I appreciate the effort. <laughs> uh I mean I really like the entire second side of Spirit of Eden. Um, I think the opener for that is uh, it's called Inheritance. And I mean, I kind of, I, I will probably sit down and, and digest this album multiple times over the next couple of days. I may actually write about it because it's, it's an album that it's an album that I forget. I love so much, which is really weird, but it's also appropriate for that album. But yeah, inheritance on spirit of Eden. It was none of those songs. I think were singles or if they released a single, it didn't do well, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to look at more of a more of a pop sense, I would go the opener on "It's My Life." "Dumb Dumb Girl" is a really good pop song. Uh, "It's My Life" is a really good pop song. Um, the first track on "The Party's Over" called "Talk Talk" is really good. Uh, "Life Is What You Make It." "Happiness Is Easy" on "The Color of Spring," um, and yeah, the entirety of the album Spirit of Eden uh, would be like, th that would be the stuff I would say, yeah, you should listen to this. If you don't like this, you're not going to like this band. Um, if you're, if you, if you start on Spirit of Eden and you say, hey, this is pretty good, check out Laughing Stock. Uh, that will probably be the one that's not everybody's cup of tea for sure. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, they put, they put out some, some of the more beautiful music of the 80s. And they are easily one of the more underrated bands of that decade. So uh, check them out. They are streaming everywhere, as far as I know. Nice. Or just yeah, YouTube I just them. I just looked them up on Amazon Music. They're there. Yeah. So yeah, their their stuff, despite being overlooked and underrated, they are not hard to find, which is good. Well, R.I.P. Rest in peace, Mark Hollis. Thank you for thank you for the music. Thank yeah. you for the music because uh, he did it. He did it good. Yeah. <laughs>